I'm Barbara Martin from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. So basically, I grew up in a Christian home, but um, I did not really know the Lord, and I didn't know that I needed to know the Lord. I went to Bible school, Sunday school, all that stuff. My high school years, my college, I, when I began to go to college, I just decided to walk away from all that because I didn't believe that what I was raised to believe was really true. But I had an inner unrest in my life. Uh, I got married and um, knew that there had to be something more to life. And when I was going to Youngstown University, I had a professor that had said, the Bible's really a great literature book, but you really can't believe what's in it. So I thought, aha, my mom was wrong. But I came to find out he was wrong. And um, I had different people witnessing to me about that I need to ask Jesus into my life. And the church that I grew up in never said to ask Jesus into my life. But there was, it was a Methodist church and there was a picture at the front of the church that had Jesus knocking at the door. And I never really knew what that meant till I realized, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door and um, asks me to come in, I will. That's when I knew I needed to ask him to come in. And um, I asked Jesus into my life, and I began to develop a relationship with Jesus that has been growing to this day. Various and sundry things I've gone through, um, phases where I've walked away, where I've not really walked away from him, but being his being totally my center. And, uh, but I, I always come back to him and back to the center, not to him, I never walk totally away, but back to where I want to be on fire for him. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Past Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. My wife Joyce here and a lady that I've known for many, many years. And mm -hmm. I just like her testimony because it's different. Uh -huh. And when you hear this testimony today, you'll probably wonder, maybe that's me sitting in my church and mm -hmm. doesn't know Jesus Christ. The scripture I'm going to give her and then she'll talk about it because I said, she, probably, she said, I never heard about that. Uh, no one told her about it. It says, mm -hmm. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Nobody was telling you some of these things, right? Uh, no. And whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, who do we have today? We have Barbara Martin. And Barbara, it is really good to have you here. Thank you. We were chatting a little bit ago, and I hate to say how many years back we go. Yeah, we uh, Women's Glow and all the things that we were involved in. And here you are now sitting on our TV show. So <laughs> it really is an honor to have Thank you here, you. honey. Mm -hmm. It's an honor to be here, and I remember being on his radio program. Oh boy, that's a be while ago too. Before he had TV, yeah. yes. Yeah, before that was a long TV. time ago. Wow. It? Yeah. Pardon me. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. 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 But it was pretty awesome. Yeah. How about your childhood? Where, where you know? Where... Well, I um, I grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. um, raised to go to Sunday school, Bible mm -hmm. school, and I even went to my cousins and had to go to their Bible school and. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just the way we were raised. Uh -huh. I knew all those songs, Jesus Loves Me and everything like this. But when I continued to grow up, I got smarter mm -hmm. and uh, said, I don't think any of this stuff is really for real. And um, I began to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. I even went to college, Youngstown University, mm -hmm. and I had a professor that had said, uh, the Bible's a wonderful book, but you can't really believe a word in it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, see, Mom, you're wrong. You mean the, the professor said that? <laughs> he did. He did. I still remember his name, but I won't say it. Yes, but sir. from there, though, um, I began to get an, like an inner unrest within me. I walked away from church, uh -huh. Sunday school and everything. As a matter of fact, when my husband and I went to get married and then we went to the pastor, he goes, I didn't know your mother had a, another daughter. Oh, wow. Now that's pretty bad, okay? Yeah. Um, but that's how far away I had walked. Mm -hmm. Then when Ron and I got married and we were more or less ha having had a great life, but I had an mm -hmm. inner unrest mm -hmm. to which at that point I began to have people give me, um, come to me and witness and say, mm -hmm. do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And I'm like, I, I had no idea what they were talking Nothing. about. Nothing, you mean? I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew about him, but I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. And then I came to realize from all these people witnessing to me that 
maybe I did need to ask him into my life. Mm -hmm. There was a, a, a picture in our church, at the front of our church, that had, um, the, behold, I stand at the door mm -hmm. and knock. If mm -hmm. anyone opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. I didn't know I had to open that door. Well, it's, if you look at that picture, there's no doorknob right. on the outside. Right. That's right. And yeah. that didn't come to me till later uh -huh. either. Uh -huh. So finally, well, then the other thing was that I, I, which really drew me that I may not know the Lord, mm -hmm. was that I, um, every time I would drive by a, a cemetery, I would have a fear of death oh. and dying. And th is that all there is? Then finally, when I, after so many people witnessing to me, uh, and I finally said, okay, I'll ask you oh. into my life, Jesus. <laughs> um, when I did drive by one of those cemeteries, all of a sudden that was gone. I had no fear of death anymore. And I, it was, I didn't lose it. It was just yeah. God took it away. You opened the door on the inside. Yeah. You opened yeah. the inside. Yeah. So from there then I just began to, um, I had a hunger to read the Bible. And that's another thing. When I began to read the Bible, it was about the time that this movie was out, The Exorcist. Oh, dear. Honestly, I put the Bible away because as I began to read it, the more I would read it, it would be like the, 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 Satan would give me a hard time. And I then finally, my mother, I believe it was, said to me, well, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. True. So I began to say that verse. Then I'd pick up the Bible and I'd start to read it. It was fine. No more. No, I was no more afraid to, to get into that word. Was your mother born again? I mean... Yeah, that was the thing. She wasn't whenever we were growing up, but when the charismatic movement began to start, my mom was in a small Bible studies prayer group where they began to pray for one another, uh -huh. and I really thought mom had gone off the deep end, okay? <laughs> but mom had received Poor a mom. healing. She had a, a tumor in her face, and prepped for surgery and this little group, prayer group, was praying for her and um, when the doctor come out and said to us, we're not going to do surgery, your mom's tumor has disappeared. I knew <gasps> this is the God I want to uh, serve, the one that's amen. doing miracles today. Right. And mom in her late married life and after us kids had asked Jesus into her life. Wow. And then another interesting thing on that thing on that <laughs> is that on mom's dying days in the apartment, she wanted to know if all of us kids, her niece and nephews, had asked Jesus into her life. And it was how like precious. maybe five days later that mom was gone. So see mm -hmm. how the difference in being raised in a church and knowing about Jesus, but then when you finally do know Jesus, mm -hmm. you want others to know him. How about, yeah. uh, you, you worked uh, from what company? From, uh, I, I know you worked uh, out uh, at Johnson Industries or something. Yes. I was. God really took care of me. I was I grew up in Orangeville and I was blessed to get a job there mm -hmm. and they put up with me for 40 years. There wow. was like three or four different <laughs> uh. owners, okay, and each one kept me and um, it was it was a great experience too. Well, did they did you lose your friends? Did you get new friends or I mean I mean since you're so, you know, a lot of time people just think going to church and they have a clique or they have a group of people and they meet every Sunday and so forth and mm -hmm. it's a ritual. Uh, well, what happened with me was, I, I mean, my friends were all really good friends and they all went to church. And when I began to tell them about, you need to ask Jesus into your life, some of them were interested, mm -hmm. but they didn't want to make that commitment. But I, I really began to pray for them and some of them made their commitment, some of them walked away and I began to get new friends. We had um, mm -hmm. Women's Aglow Fellowship. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you mentioned yeah, sure, that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's what the Lord used to help me grow in Him. So I guess to answer your questions, I, I kept a lot of friends, but we got a lot of new friends as well because they don't really want to walk with you mm -hmm. when you're walking a different walk in the Lord. Is that what you would ask? Yeah. You know, you know, the Bible says, like you said, John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father unless they come to the Son, right? right. You heard these things, but they didn't become a re reality until you receive Christ, John 1, 12 says, through all those receive him, mm -hmm. gave you power to become sons of God, even That's to right. those who believe on his name, right? Right. Where you and, uh, when you and your husband, for instance, when you, when you met your husband, was, was you saved after? After. After yeah. you, mm -hmm. you and your husband, both? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Go well, ahead. that was an interesting thing, Dawn, because um, I was afraid if I'd asked Jesus into my life w where it was going to go. Right. And I, it's one of my hesitations a long time ago was, well, is my life's really going to change? I can't give up this. I can't give up that. I didn't have to give up anything. And then God right. gave me the strength to say to my husband, look, I've asked Jesus into my life. And mm. then God crossed my path with a, a, a mentor. We kind of need mentors mm -hmm. uh, in one of the grocery stores in the valley. And um, I began going to church where she went, and she would say to me, don't go home and preach to your husband. Just tell him, share with him what's going on here. Right. And, and she's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and we would go to the altar and pray. And um, she said, now picture him here. He's going to come up here, and it's going to be like nothing to you. And that's what happened. He began, I, I would go home and share with him. Then he um, came to church with us, and then he went to the altar. And he asked Jesus into his life. So we just didn't know we needed to ask him. Yeah. You know, you, you, like you say, Joyce and I, you know, we were a bit different backgrounds and so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, some churches are planning and, you know, I, I, a lot of times they may have preached born again. I mean, a lot of churches, I defend a lot of churches out there. They could have been preaching born again, but maybe you just, you were there, but you weren't there. You follow me? But every Sunday morning it was a ritual, right? Mm -hmm. You go to the Sunday school every Sunday morning and then you, you go to Perkins restaurant in our area after, you go to restaurant after and then then, then, then that's the last time you see church. Mm -hmm. That's the last time you even have a, a any kind of a, a fellowship with Christians mm -hmm. until the next, and they, I don't know whether they're looking forward to breakfast and lunches or whether they're looking forward to church, but I'm not trying to be funny, mm -hmm. but I did the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, religion is the hardest spirit that we're dealing with today. Don't you find that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And they, and I think basically what they think is that's the duty is to go to church. Right. and But the personal relationship is the, the big thing. And well, that's the difference I had. If that's all you do is go to church, you're really missing the blessing. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's an attitude in the world that going to church is boring. You, mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. because it's my duty. I mm -hmm. do my Christian duty. Mm -hmm. But when you're really walking with the Lord and you take his hand and you go where he wants you to go, God has sent us all over the world. I mean, and he's bringing people to us mm -hmm. from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to spend a year in Russia. Never in my life did I ever think I'd be able to. But it's exciting to be a Christian just mm -hmm. to wake up it every is. day and say, God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do today? Yeah. What are we going to yeah. do today? Yeah. 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 You know, one thing, like I said, when she went to Russia, she never... Never had, never even planned on it, and oh. somehow God used her over there in mm -hmm. Russia, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a lot of people out there today mm -hmm. that if they would just take that opportunity to pick up the Bible, you know, a lot of people I say, well, I don't believe this, like, like you said, the professor, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Good, I, I don't care, don't believe it, but mm -hmm. why don't you pick up the Bible? Mm -hmm. You know why you can't? Because you're not born again. Mm -hmm. You have no desire. If you, you talk about uh, in Revelation 3.20, you said, Behold, that's it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and sup with you, right? Mm -hmm. That's Revelation 3.20 you're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that, that's a good good illustration of a door. If you ever look at that picture, some of them people, just like you said, right? I, well, I, I saw the picture, but I never saw the handle. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that handle is not there. Mm -hmm. which means you have to open up from the mm -hmm. inside of your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, and you went to, like, you, were, you went to two different churches, didn't you? When you were a child, don't tell me. Yeah, I went to the Catholic, went to the Methodist. Well, I used to go to a lot of different churches because I had Christian friends at Baptist Church downtown, uh, Methodist Church, Episcopal Church. I mean, I just went wherever my mm -hmm. friends went, but mm -hmm. I had to go to my own first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'd go to church twice on Sunday morning, usually. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Don, another good example is about testing God. When I got invited to go to Russia, I thought, I can't do that. And mm -hmm. I sat down one day and made a list of 13, 12 or 13 reasons why I couldn't go. Okay, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And the one that I laugh about is who's going to shovel my snow and who's going to mow my grass. I had a big house, yeah. you know, and yeah. it had to be taken yeah. care of. I couldn't go away for a whole year and leave it. My kids were all married. One was in California. Can't ask your kids to be responsible mm -hmm. for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And uh, went to this little Methodist church, and uh, we had just gotten a new pastor there, and out of the clear blue sky she was preaching, and she said, you have to follow your dreams. You have to listen to the Lord. You have to 
let him speak to you mm -hmm. and hear what he's saying. Mm -hmm. What's more important, she said, listening to God or like she's searching for words mm -hmm. or shoveling snow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and it was summer when she said it. I went out of the church <laughs> crying. I, I go, well, That's I was what Pastor I mean. Faye Barker yeah. out in Clark. And, you had, you oh had, I want to go back to that. I don't know whether, remember the, still, I was ready to retire. Yeah. Now, tell me what happened there because that just falls in with what okay. happened later on. Okay, well, yeah. it was pretty cool how, how God crosses paths. Yes. Your, your, right. your thing, your saying, your, whatever the saying is that you have. Um, God crossed our paths many times, yeah. Don, and uh, you had made a comment one time that you, you thought you were ready to retire. And this was probably 15 <laughs> years ago, Don, okay? <laughs> And I was, I was still a new Christian, but I was beginning to grow in the Lord. I mean, God takes your hand, and I mean, he, I, I had a wonderful mentor that helped me get into the Bible and, and study. And anyway, so this one day after I had talked with you, mm -hmm. I got a scripture that I knew I was to give to you to encourage you to keep going. And I thought, I can't call Don and give him that scripture. <laughs> and I can remember right in my kitchen where I was hesitating to pick up that phone. And I thought, i got to call him. I picked it up and gave you the scripture. I don't remember what the scripture was, Dawn, but I said, Dawn, I said, I think I have a scripture for you. And I, I was new in this. I didn't know that you could do this stuff, really. <laughs> and here it was a scripture that God used to encourage him to keep moving. Mm -hmm. and, and Dawn had said to me, Barbara, I'm really glad you called because that's going to help me make my decision. Right, Dawn? Oh, yeah, that, well, that happens. See, and it's funny how people will get this. The scripture, or they'll get a, a notice. Of, uh, the Lord will tell them, okay, mm -hmm. Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And they think maybe they don't, shouldn't do it, or they're a little right. embarrassed, or they mm -hmm. think it's they're qualified. That's not true, mm -hmm. because that was followed up with the same thing two years ago. With it, right? Whenever mm -hmm. I again, at my young age of whatever, <laughs> no, not eighty-one. Like uh, no, another one. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I was ready to really until a man walked into my house and laid down a check for $25,000 yeah. and said, I want you to go nationwide. Wow. Now mm -hmm. there is the same thing that, mm -hmm. and of course I probably, uh, I mean, I'll never retire. <laughs> uh, you can't retire in, in a sense of retiring when there's people, opportunities to witness out there, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't even understand that scripture, right? Mm -hmm. But as a result, then, you know, we're sitting here where a man later on called me on the telephone and he said, hey, I've been watching your TV program and we really think it's for real and uh, we want you to use this uh, $3 million building in Newcastle, PA. Well, mm -hmm. he twisted my arm. I said, yes. <laughs> and then he said, you can have all our equipment and use that. And they gave the men that run the equipment and everything. So we moved from doing it in our home to mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. See, so, and you've watched Crossing Paths before, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why I think the ministry is so wonderful, like you and your husband. You go to Florida, right? Yes. Last time I talked to you in For Florida, the winter, right? right? Mm -hmm. Huh? For the winters, yeah. we're blessed. <laughs> we're blessed. And what, what do you think is, is happening today, if you could just tell me, as far as, don't you a little, bit, little leery about the, what's happening to our country? And Oh, yeah, really. But God tells us not to fear, and yeah. as evil uh, is is happening, he his spirit is moving. So mm -hmm. righteousness goes forth much more. So when we see evil, we know God's moving. Mm -hmm. And in Florida, there is there's a real move of the spirit down there in some of the rural areas of Florida. Well, you know? We had a telephone call from a young lady that was watching our program, and I'll go ahead and tell about yeah, the prayer. Okay. Um, she said, I have an idea, and I think other people are already doing this, but at 1 o'clock every day, 1 p.m., right after lunch, at 1 o'clock, set your alarm clock, your cell phones, or whatever, for 1 o'clock, next zone, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, okay? Mm -hmm. And when that buzzer goes off, stop for one minute and oh. pray mm -hmm. for the United States. Mm -hmm. Pray for God to restore us back to a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And so we do that, and I don't care where we're at. Mm -hmm. We had company one day, we were sitting out in the back porch, buzzer goes off, I said, okay, one o'clock, we have to pray. One minute, yeah. the guy took his hat mm -hmm. off, sat there and bowed his head, and so we all prayed. 
But if everybody across, everybody that's here in this program mm -hmm. pass that on mm -hmm. at one o'clock, whatever time zone you are, yeah. go backwards and uh, pray one minute for mm -hmm. the United States. Think of the thousands of people yeah. that could be praying for our country. Yeah, and what's and once one minute, it's it's quite powerful in God's hands. Right, with that many praying, mm -hmm. yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. I think maybe out there, the audience out there might just take this. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. we were going to talk about. It. One o'clock, right? One o'clock. Set your cell phone, right? Set your cell phone, right, for one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And if you're in uh, another zone, the same thing mm -hmm. at 10, 11, whatever, California, 12. So it'll still be one o'clock <laughs> all over the world, right. however you look at it, mm -hmm. okay? Same minute, and, and the maybe, same minute. And then uh, just stop and pray for our country because we need it. I mean, mm -hmm. it, whoever mm -hmm. heard of things like happening today, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody's afraid to talk about sin. I'm not, sin is sin. And you know you were lost. You were a nice yeah. person. And everybody thought, boy, what a nice person she is. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know Jesus Christ right. as your mm -hmm. Lord and Savior, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and, I did and not. That, I think Joey said, that's, that's, we run that all the time. We get phone calls from people that uh, uh, call me up and they say, well, I don't know what it means to be born again. Well, and one lady said, well, what was it? She said John, that. You said John 3 3. Yeah, I said John said, 3 3, you know. And she mm -hmm. said, oh, uh, and, and she goes to a mainline denomination. And she said, what's John 3, 3? I said, well, go to your Bible and to John 3, 3. She said, jo what's John? Yeah, you didn't know where John yeah. was. I know. And yeah. she said, we were taught never to read the Bible, just to rely right. on somebody right. else, you know what right. I mean? Right. And so I said, how can you not agree mm -hmm. and, and, and don't believe me, mm -hmm. but believe what the Word of God said, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm, it, it happens out there too, people. So, you know, I just want to say one thing mm -hmm. too. Don't you think really, honestly, now look at our school today, right? Children. Grandchildren, you don't have any because you're not married. You don't have any children, right? No, but I have nieces and nephews. I right, <laughs> pray for them. Are Same they, idea. Are, are they, uh, uh, what do you have to do? You've got to what? Pray for them. I right. do. I do pray right. for them every single solitary night. I list them by name, oh. and once a week, I I have a a, a larger mm -hmm. list. But I do pray that they'd mm -hmm. they'd come to know Him or grow in Him. Right. Those that do know Him, yeah. And there's power in prayer, you know. Yeah. yeah. Sure enough. You know, another thing we talked about, and this is kind of funny, but we often wonder since we went nationwide how many different states are watching us. And if you're out there watching us and would take, I'm going to say a penny postcard, but I know they're not penny anymore, send us a note. You don't have to put your name or anything on it. Crossing Paths, P.O. Box 1181, Hermitage, PA 16148, and just say, I'm watching you from Texas. I'm watching you from Colorado. We'd like to know. And I don't know of any other good way to get that. So if you're watching and you feel like doing it, please send us a postcard. Just say, I'm watching you. Amen. I like the show. Yes. They can add that. <laughs> yes, you know. And, and we encourage you to go to the internet, right? Right. And, and, right. and, and there's a place on there you can send your contributions if you want to. Uh, you know, uh, because, you know, all of our television programs are on the internet. So we're all over the country, all over the world in a sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have seven churches that we built in India. We mm -hmm. take part of our tithes and we, you know, we give them to other ministries, local ministries and so forth. You know, this mm -hmm. ministry is, like I said, just common, ordinary people. That's what I like to see. See, Barbara, mm -hmm. I don't like to have always the men that are, not that I'm against my testimony, but people that are in the church. There's a lady one time, that, if I remember right, she invited me to, preaching her church and she and she ended up getting saved she was in the choir singing sitting there all her life not saved mm -hmm. and you think you know well you don't have to have a financial everybody's experience is different mm -hmm. you know uh, in uh, Matthew 7 7 it says ask and you shall receive and seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be opened mm -hmm. you know if you asked the Bible says in John 14 13 ask anything in my name and I will do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Matthew 14, 13, 14 said, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. So you have to ask, Lord, you know, you have to humble yourself. People today don't like to humble themselves. See, mm -hmm. I was an alcoholic. I'm no longer an alcoholic. Amen. I was a compulsive gambler. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer a compulsive gambler. I was an adulterer. Mm -hmm. I was, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you today, November, 22nd, 21st, 1974, mm. the Lord changed my life. Thank you, Jesus. And I found out that I haven't been right since, and then I picked up the Bible and says, you're a peculiar person. You started a whole new adventure. And I found out you? I got a bunch of peculiar people sitting right <laughs> in this audience today, too. 
They yeah. actually want to come down and watch television shows put together and, mm -hmm. and Matt and all of Mark and all mm -hmm. of our, our crew, you know, and our new co-host, Mark, mm -hmm. uh, what we always say, I'll let you use his last name. What is it? Wabazuski. Wabaluski or whatever. <laughs> I, I, mm -hmm. I always have somebody else use um, bad, bad names when I can't understand them. Mm -hmm. All right, but anyways. Tell them about Dr. Luke. <laughs> what about? Uh, well, Don's mentioned this before. We, Crossing Paths, help build six or seven churches yeah. in India. Yeah. And we've been communicating with him. And I said, make sure you watch us and gave him the website. He writes back, he said, you can watch me on YouTube. And he gave me his thing on YouTube, and I thought, what a small world. Oh, 25 yeah. years ago, you couldn't have done that. And you can watch us on YouTube, too. Yeah. You can watch us, you know, I, I, there's so many opportunities today, people. Do you want to do it? So I just yeah. have to close this message today. I want to say thank you. So those that are supporting us for $7 a month, or if you want to give us one check for $77 a month, God's perfect number, I'm telling you, God will bless you. If you want to send something, we've had people that will buy one half one program, which is a half an hour, costs us about six hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars just on one station that we're on. Now we're on a lot of stations, okay? So if you if you feel like doing it, that's the end of my message of asking for money, because I am not one of these people that are going to give you a dollar ninety-eight trinket trinket for a thousand dollars. I'm sorry, that's not me. But do you know Jesus today? That's the most important thing. Ask Him to come into your life. And he'll come into your life. You know, you don't have to. You say, well, I've done so many things that God will never forgive me. No, I want to tell you something. God forgives and he forgets. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, if you can't catch yeah. that. He forgives, puts all your sins. I put it in a bushel basket and send it over Niagara Falls mm -hmm. out into the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, another basket. But there's not quite many that men the next day. And the next day, and the next day. And pretty soon the basket's getting empty. But you know what? Matthew 6, 34 says, live one day at a time. Take no thought for tomorrow. Do you know Jesus? Call this telephone number, 724-981-7777 or 724-1855-981-9777. God loves you. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ today. Today is the day of salvation.